A hello and welcome, a good morning if you're tuning in Sunday morning, a good evening if you happen to be tuning in on a Wednesday night. Our service today celebrates perhaps the most beloved liturgy that we share post-Easter, and that is the celebration of Jesus, our Good Shepherd. Most often known for being a Sunday or a Wednesday service where you would invite a friend the church, of course, in these days, that's not exactly as possible as we would like it to be. And so today, we transform those efforts in the way that we welcome all of those who are tuning in from across the nation. And just the same, we're celebrating, of course, the way in which our Good Shepherd Jesus invites us to follow. Many of our faith family's favorite hymns and, of course, those Good Shepherd texts from Scripture come to us today. And so with that, we have a word that centers, of course, all of the wonderful themes that point us to our Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ, as we gather for this service. The closing prayer of the funeral service begins with these words, Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them safely home. Describing Jesus as a shepherd is a special image used in prayers, hymns, and in Christian artwork. The believer receives a sense of assurance in knowing that the one being followed throughout life is Jesus, the Good Shepherd himself. The fact that our Lord chooses to repeat the words, I am the Good Shepherd, more than once indicates its importance to him and to us. As we follow Jesus, we can be confident that he will lead us into that place where goodness and righteousness are eternal. We celebrate our opening hymn, hymn number 710, The Lord's My Shepherd I'll Not Want.
as we've celebrated in this Easter season, the highest portion of our worship before our Heavenly Father, that is, our confession and the assurance of His absolution, will be visited later in the service in the place of the Lord's Supper. For now, we enter into God's house with a word of invocation and prayer. Psalm 95, beginning with verse 1, O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so now, may the Lord be with you. Thank you. And let us pray. O Almighty God, most merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit, that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we attend to the day's readings, we join together with perhaps the most familiar of psalms according to the shepherding theme in the Old Testament. In fact, the psalm that was just put to song in hymn 710, we share together Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We celebrate the day's epistle as we continue to track through the letter of 1 Peter for us today, 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning with verse 19. For this is a gracious thing. When mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps." He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and the overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, as you are able, I would invite you to stand as we celebrate today's gospel. That is the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Often known as the Good Shepherd Discourse, we hear Jesus' own words. Our Lord says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. And so Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. 
All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find good pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I'll invite you to be seated. We join together singing the hymn of the day, hymn number 709, The King of Love My Shepherd Is.
Christ, who brings us assurance as our good shepherd. Amen. Children of the congregation, this word is for you today. I want to challenge you. In these last weeks, we've gotten closer and closer to the screen together. But this is one for you to really kind of take and, and be active with. Maybe you're in a space in your home right now where you're not too close to a door. But what I would like you to do when you get the chance is find a door in your home that has a lock. Maybe it's the front door, the back door, the garage door. Maybe you have a lock on your bedroom door or maybe even say just a courtesy lock on the bathroom door. If you open and shut the door, you should be able to come and go into whatever space you need, whether that's in and out of your house, whether that's to use things like the restroom in your home, or whether it's just to have a bit of privacy in your own room. Without the lock, you can open and shut, open and shut, come and go. Hear from me as your pastor, don't slam the doors. Mom and dad get a little upset by that. But do me a favor, stand on the side of the door that you would lock. Shut the door, lock the door, and then try to open it. You can wiggle the handle, you can press on the lock. Maybe, maybe it is you find that even when you're the one to lock the door, you're not able to get it open. In today's gospel lesson, Jesus, as our good shepherd, pictures himself to be a door, a gate, for the sheep who are in the corral or in the barn to come and go to green pasture. With Jesus as the door, he's the one that has the power to lock and unlock our eternal life in heaven. As you celebrate Jesus who is the door, my prayer for you today is just like you can open and close, lock and unlock the doors in your own home prayerfully, you'll come to see Jesus as the one who is that door that keeps heaven unlocked for you and for me. May God bless you as you try out all the knobs in your house today. Now, to you who are otherwise bigger children in the congregation, we have an excellent gospel that is so familiar to us, and to that end, it's the familiarity that brings the challenge. I'm a little heartbroken to give this message today, not because there's any real sort of bearing gravity, you know, say compared to last week's sermon where we needed to remind ourselves to forego things that are petty in order to be called ahead to what God is doing for us. No, this is a gospel where especially after the hustle and bustle that brings us to a joyful Eastertide, very akin to our Christmas celebrations, now that the dust has settled and the waters are rather calm, we ache to hear this gospel that brings us such blessed assurance. It's heavy on my heart today. I think as far back as St. Patrick's Day when we began this mode of worship, and of course, things are working. It is a blessing, and many of you are calling in with your, your compliments and certainly better the, the way in which these services have become a blessing to you for such a time as this. Continue to give God your praise for that. We're simply serving, and it's a wonderful opportunity. Well... Palm Sunday, we would have welcomed a host of new members into our congregation, including three high school students who made special effort through their own paces to come to their own personal confirmation day. This uh, specific Sunday, May 3rd, would have been confirmation Sunday for us. And what a theme to have Jesus as our Lord, our Savior, our Shepherd, and our King saying, follow me, my we get our marching orders from our good shepherd just as he described his own work. He goes into our midst so that he can appreciate and live the life that we live. And then he goes on ahead us to call us beyond to the places where he's already gone. And just as you celebrate, say, in Psalm 23, Jesus is bringing you through that valley of the shadow of death to that place where his righteousness and relationship is such a beautiful, eternal truth. Wow. Would have been just uh, excellent. 
I found, by the way, viewing my own sermons with you, that I say wonderful an awful lot. So I've got to find a new word, I think. But nonetheless, wonderful, awesome is our God. Looking at today's text, the gravity of Jesus calling for us to follow, the urgency and the awareness that would bring us assurance in our times of confusion, Jesus is doing it all. And so as we explore that assurance today, we come to some familiar images, yes, but most important, we come to a text that we may once thought was familiar, but today you'll you'll see what Jesus is is really doing. Uh, Maybe it is today the text that you're so familiar with will bring you new light and challenge in life. Now, the image that goes before you, we celebrate in our gathering space in the narthex that leads up to our kitchen. Many of you were here at the time when our good brother in Christ, Paul Oman, was with us to celebrate this beautiful mural as he painted it during a worship service here at St. Luke's in celebration of St. Luke's 75th anniversary. St. Luke's is now 82 years old, and so we've been blessed to host this wonderful image. You see, of course, in the image, not only the flock on the bottom side of the screen and those who join in voices of praise over our good shepherd who brings us safely home in his embrace, but you also see Jesus not only as the shepherd but the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world on the right side of the mural. Some of you who celebrated that service with us, you recall even uh, Brother Paul's own wisdom that says, on any given day... We have to imagine that we're either crucifying our Lord and Savior Jesus all over again or we're praising him eternal for the assurance that he gives in times of confusion. What a wonderful mode and message for us to hear today. We need that salve of the gospel. We need that blessed assurance where we see Jesus coming to make us his own. But before we get there, we must appreciate the conviction that comes to us in Scripture. It's a leveling word today. In John chapter 10, beginning at verse 7, this is what Jesus had to share, that he's the door, or in one of the translations that I prefer to read, the gate for the sheep. Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the gate of the sheep, All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and will come out and will find green pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus says, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. We appreciate Jesus as our good shepherd. We praise him. Worthy is the lamb who takes away the sin of the world. But this becomes rather confusing. Maybe on any given Sunday, we can acknowledge Jesus as the shepherd and as the lamb, especially when we're together to celebrate the Lord's Supper. There we see the lamb of God slain on the altar of our heavenly father. But now there's a third base that Jesus covers for as much as he's the shepherd and as much as he is the lamb, he's also the gate. I don't know how this hits you today, but maybe it is that when we come to hear this text and we ache for assurance, it's because we're caught up in the confusion that Jesus himself covers with his comforting presence. The question goes before you today, not simply this text, but really any Bible reading. When you come to a text in Scripture, what are you bringing to the text? What do you expect to hear? This is a particular challenge for us as American Christians because so often we know that we can come to the foot of the cross, confess our sins, hear Jesus' wonderful absolution. There are times where, strangely, we would come to a certain theme day and say, oh, it's got to be this hymn sung today, and it's got to be this reading, or it ain't worship. 
Well, there again, similar to a a little note in last week's message, there are times where we become so demanding as a faith family that we look to God and we say, God, we love what you're doing for us. We want to hear it exactly in this way. Now, there really isn't a problem in that when it comes to anticipation. But when it comes to demanding God to do this for us, we have to wait upon the word of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What is it for you? Did you tune in today perhaps knowing that it was Good Shepherd Sunday and you expected to hear the assurance of life abundance? The punchline that Jesus shares in the reading from the gospel today. Did you come to hear that Jesus will comfort you, especially in a time of confusion? Again, not a bad approach. A safe approach. But before Jesus delivers that gospel, he wants to give you a peek behind the curtain. He wants to give you a place as a sheep in the fold right at the gate to see what he's continually, presently, and eternally accomplishing for you. When this text of John chapter 10 comes to us, we get to celebrate perhaps the fulfillment and fruition of all of those beautiful shepherding images from the Old Testament that finally find their yes and amen in the person, life, work, and presence, the very power and authority of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We so often forget that the majority of what Jesus has to share, if he's not teaching for effect, he's celebrating performative action. That is to say, when Jesus speaks, things immediately happen. If Jesus says he's the good shepherd, he is the good shepherd. If Jesus says that he's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, he's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. There's no deceit in our Lord's mouth, just as we celebrated in today's epistle. But perhaps moving through the typology of the Old Testament, we come to a place where we not only find appreciation, but we find a divine satisfaction in the atonement and righteousness that our Lord and Savior Jesus is speaking. You go to the Old Testament, and from as such young years of King David as the shepherd who would be king, going even to the likes of the prophet Ezekiel, where God himself says, I will come and be the shepherd of my own people. They will be my flock. I will be their shepherd. I will be their God and king. They will be my people forevermore. You get the picture in your mind of this whole flock of the faithful running up and down Mount Zion, going in and out of the place where we're tended for and being able not only to seek, but to finally have that joyful green pasture in abundance. In a sense, you could see nodes even in King David's life where he came to places of peace and rest and joined in his testimony in Psalm 23, I'm a shepherd, and I know what it's like to watch over the flock. The Lord is my shepherd. And so it is how wonderful in the fruition and fulfillment of the Old Testament imagery we come to a place where Jesus, in the midst of confusion, addresses our lack. He knows at times how shameful we treat ourselves. He knows at times how irresponsible we are. When he tells that parable of the 99 faithful sheep who remain on the hillside and the one who strays, he's echoing perhaps the most wonderful prophecy that Isaiah shares in advance of what we celebrate in Advent, in Lent, and even now. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. It's as if to say we've, we've had times in our lives and maybe even today where we've been the one who has gone away. All of a sudden, all hundred sheep leave the mountain. And the Lord goes through all of the ditches and the crags and the clefts and he brings his rod and his staff. And just as you see in the wonderful imagery that bears the endurance, the suffering, the atoning sacrifice and the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, his divine pursuit brings us up into that embrace to draw us safely home. 
as he draws us safely home, he bids us to follow. He brings a word of confusion in the gospel that would have us think about every possible way that Jesus could be our help, our savior, our comforter. And in a word, he looks to us as sheep in the fold and as our shepherd, he says, I'm going to do it all. It's a wonderful word. Truthfully, wonderful because it finds us in a place not only where we're lacking, not only where we're confused, not only in a society where it's so difficult to tone everything out so that we might hear his call, but we get to imagine every single facet of life at every turn. We look and we see Jesus. We find our shepherd. We poke our head up above the flock and there he is. We have our head down to do the things that we're meant to do and we can still hear him in earshot. It's such a wonderful image. It brings with it a little confusion and conviction. I don't know what it's like for you. Shepherding culture is not too terribly familiar in the Midwest, but we know what it is to keep cattle. We know what it is sometimes to have, uh, say, flocks of turkeys or chickens. We also know what it's like to have a whole herd sort of a mentality. And it kind of looks like this. In times where a herd or a flock gets distracted, they put their heads up above everything. They look to the left, the right. They prop an ear up. If they don't see the shepherd and if they don't hear the voice, well, they begin to get into a little mischief. Hogs, for instance, when they're bored, start to chew on each other's tails until they see the slightest sight of blood, and then they go after one another. Sheep tend to either collapse in laziness or they tend to hop up on one another to try to injure each other and look down on the one that's been injured. Does this sound familiar? Because it happens all too often even inside of a faith family. Jesus is the one who keeps us moving by his voice. He's in our midst. I heard it once said from the place of shepherding that the best shepherds smell like their sheep. That is to say, they eat, they sleep, they breathe, they work, they conduct every bit of their livelihood in the midst of the flock. And so does our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you imagine the stench of life that comes this side of heaven in the midst of a great flock, you see the ultimate stench when you watch our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ approach something as grisly and tortuous as the cross for you and for me. There it's amazing that as the shepherd goes the road of being sacrificed on that great tree that is the cross, all of a sudden something so lowly and reviled becomes something that we look to for hope in the same way that a sheep would acknowledge the crook of a shepherd's staff and know that they're about to be rescued. How beautiful. Jesus comes to where you are today and acknowledges that he'll fill in all the gaps. Jesus comes to you by his own presence and power and comfort today and lets you know that every base is covered. Every role is fulfilled. He's the shepherd. He's the lamb of God and he is the gate. Perhaps in closing, one of my favorite pieces of imagery when it comes to this statement of Jesus being the gate I've shared this before, but I really think it's appropriate now. It's been so moving in my life of faith. There's a stained glass little uh, window in, in a little church in Northern California, and it depicts a shepherd who is standing at the posts of the barn fence between the yard and the pasture. And the shepherd has his feet spread wide so that the sheep can walk through. And when it comes to a shepherding culture there in Northern California and in Oregon and in Washington, they, they really get it because as the sheep come and go from the yard to the pasture and from the pasture to the yard, there's the shepherd who is only letting one sheep pass at a time to check them over for any brambles that they might have gotten into, to look at the jowls and the gums to make sure that they haven't gotten into anything that they shouldn't have gotten into, to give medicine right in the back of the jaw if that's necessary for the sake of immunization, and to put that wonderful overflowing oil onto their faces to keep pests and gnats and flies away while they're out enjoying 
the wonderful acreage that they live on. You see, that's the image of Jesus being the gate. That as we come and go, we're not only embraced and caressed by our good shepherd, but he takes away every amount of pestilence and lets us know that whether we're waking, we're sleeping, whether we're enjoying the abundance of green pasture, or whether we're simply finding our rest in him, no matter how we live our life, with him being present in every role, we acknowledge him for the assurance that he gives as our great and ultimately good shepherd. To him be all glory forever and ever. Amen. Celebrating our testimony of faith will often turn to the likes of the Nicene Creed, the Apostles' Creed, the Athanasian Creed, should it be Trinity Sunday, this evening and today. We celebrate most especially one of our favorite creedal hymns, hymn number 953. As you're able, I'll invite you to stand as we celebrate our faith according to the words of our hymn, We All Believe in One True God. of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for the whole church, that through it the goodness of God would be shared and the good news of salvation joyfully be proclaimed throughout all the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are in any need, assured of the shepherd's care for all of his sheep. Help us to meet the needs of those who travel with us through life as we are led by our good shepherd day by day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our families and everyone in them. Together, help us to follow the good shepherd as one flock in which all dwell together in love and in unity. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for those whose tables are set in difficult or challenging places, whose lives know want or discord or sadness or continuing illness. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ. We remember those who have been hospitalized in recent days and are now recovering. O oh Lord, we commend to you Nancy and Kenneth and Camille. We ask that you would abide with Dave and with Warren and Shirley and our dear sister Jennifer. 
We pray, O oh Lord, that you would continue to guide and bless those who are in need of daily, weekly, monthly, regular treatments when it comes to cancers and chronic pains and illnesses. We raise before you Anne, and we pray for Nolan. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would be with Daryl and with Carmine, with Tom, with Joy, and with little Piper. We pray for those who mourn, especially the family of Terry. We pray, O oh Lord, for these that we would continue to broadcast the hope that we have in your name, especially in this joyful Eastertide, a hope that absorbs the chaos of this world and scatters the darkness as your light is present. We pray for all of those from our midst who are in care centers. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would continue to guide and bless any and all who are home-centered or are in nursing homes. Even so, O oh Lord, in days of self-selected exile, as we are to come and go from our homes, we pray safety and that you would continue to scatter the darkness and break the gloom of our home lives, certainly not only as the place of habit, but, Lord, there too, enjoying the gift of family in all of its forms. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ who continue to suffer with the fallout, the protocols, the, the treatments that have been needed in the wake of diagnoses of COVID-19. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would continue to strengthen those who are seeking treatments. We ask, O oh Lord, again, that you would hear the cries of your children and remember your promises and eliminate this pandemic from our midst, if only to gather again to praise your name. On this past Monday, O oh Lord, our community celebrated the return of the 128th Infantry of the Army National Guard who returned from service in Afghanistan. We pray, O oh Lord, as these men and women continue to serve our nation, that we would remember all in our midst who are in active duty and all of those who have served, that we would continue to celebrate at least the freedom that we have to gather and worship you. We pray, raising all of these prayers of joyful thanksgiving, praise, and dependence, that for these, our brothers and sisters, you would gently guide them with your rod and your staff, O good shepherd, and keep them ever with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together now we celebrate the instruction that our Lord gave as we raise the Lord's prayer in his name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As our service comes to conclusion, we're mindful that especially in these times, every resource and relationship is used to the glory of God. And so we pray that especially as you are led to use your time, your talent, your gifts, and your resources, that we would celebrate this portion of the service with thanksgiving and with our offertory. You may be seated as we celebrate God's word in our midst.
I welcome you to stand as we enjoy this evening prostrating ourselves before the foot of the cross, if only to be raised up and shared the assurance of our good shepherd. In Micah 6, we hear the word of the Lord. Let us come before God in true repentance, seeking forgiveness and the amendment of our lives as we follow the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? The prophet Micah shares, He has told you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? We confess our sins together. Almighty God, we confess that we are indeed sinful. We have done the evil you forbid and have not done the good you demand. We do repent and are truly sorry for these our sins. Have mercy on us because of Jesus, our good shepherd. Grant that by the working of the Holy Spirit, we may follow where he leads until that time when we, by his grace, come to dwell in your house forever. Now, of course, God has promised forgiveness to those who repent of their sins and turn to him for his grace. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Forgiven and free, we share our hymn of praise, hymn number 735, Have No Fear, Little Flock. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We join together as we close this Good Shepherd service and we celebrate him 711, Savior like a shepherd lead us. Amen.